Hi there, I'm Dre, the host and founder of the Dragon Network, an online membership-based community where health IT professionals can share ideas, discuss experiences, and collaborate with one another on all things health IT. For the last two videos of 2021, what I want to do is first revisit the five health IT predictions that I made at the end of last year, and then to go forward and give you my five predictions for 2022. So I'll split them into two videos, one this week and one the following week. And then in the new year, we'll jump right back in with learning some health IT content. So first, let's quickly review the five health IT predictions that I made for 2021. So first off was IT to support a vaccine rollout. Second was the optimization of telehealth. Third was a focus on creating digital front doors for organizations. Fourth, we had analyzing and optimizing financial operating models. And finally, it was further incorporation of consumer-based apps and in particular, uh, physical activity related applications and sleep tracking apps. So before I look at how I actually did, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, please go ahead and do that now. And as always, throughout my videos, if you like the types of content that you're seeing, hit that like button so that I know and I can gauge what type of videos to put forward in the future. Okay, so let's look at optimization of vaccine rollouts. So I do think for the beginning of 2021, this certainly was something that we looked at. I think the industry did a very good job of sharing lessons learned with one another so that we could help other organizations sort of roll this out as quickly as possible. The vaccine rollouts uh, were something that happened uh, en masse and over a short period of time, there was a lot of communication and a lot of logistics that needed to go behind it. So if you look at things like the University of Colorado Health, when they put out their guide to mass vaccination clinics, they shared that with everybody and opened up the door for everyone to have conversations with them to see what worked and what didn't. So there was a big focus on that in the beginning half of the year. Obviously, as more and more populations got vaccinated and as we figured that part out, that sort of waned off. And the remainder of the year, I think that just sort of fell in line with everything else that we were doing. It didn't become a focus over time. There wasn't um, as many issues, I will say, as I was anticipating. So I didn't have a very optimistic outlook of how we would navigate uh, tracking vaccines between health organizations, tracking vaccines over time, first dose, second dose, and with all of the different information that was coming out and the different timeframes that we had and different areas that we could go to to get them, I was expecting there to be a lot more confusion on the health IT side, and I think we actually navigated that very well. The second one is optimizing telehealth. So we did talk a lot about telehealth during the course of the year. I don't actually think we focused on it as much as I thought we were going to. So from an optimization perspective, I really think the focus for a lot of organizations was in optimizing the technology and what I had hoped they would focus on is optimizing the workflow and optimizing the ratio of telemedicine to in-person medicine for their clinics or their practices or their organizations. And I don't think by and large across the entire industry that that's really happened yet. So the technology piece, I think we did have some focus there and we got uh, a little bit better at that, but I don't necessarily think that with the exception of some organizations who did dive right in and get that uh, done very well, I don't think there was the focus I was anticipating on the workflow aspects and on the ratio of telemedicine to in-person. Uh, so I think that that's something that we probably will continue to see uh, evolve over the course of the next year or two. So digital front door, we did see a lot of movement in the digital front door area. I do have a video on what exactly digital front door is. So if you're not familiar with that term, I will put the link to that video in the description. This really depended on um, sort of overall activity level for the health IT teams and whether you had internal teams that would work on your websites or whether you were going uh, out of house for that or third party for that. But I do think that the importance of the digital front door sort of came to the forefront, especially with so much telemedicine going on with different sort of interactions with consumers and with a lot of the changing information that we had throughout the course of the year, there became a strong need for there to be a central location. And I do think there was quite a bit of focus on that. I don't think that work is done. I think that work will continue, but I think we made great strides in that area. And that's something that uh, I think that I got right in my predictions, which I didn't get a lot of them right. 
so the next one is the financial operating model. So at the beginning of the pandemic, we had some restrictions on um, elective procedures and surgeries, and those for a lot of organizations are a huge revenue generating opportunity. So I had thought uh, incorrectly, of course, that we would be all done with everything before the year was up and that we would have a chance to sort of dive in and look at what those operating models looks like and to rebalance a little bit and to figure out sort of how to navigate forward so that we could anticipate if something like this were to happen in the future. I do think there was a little bit of that happening because I think that we, by nature of the situation that we were in, had to do that. But I don't think those deep dives and the really long-term strategic planning for the financial operating models and how to manage through a crisis of this magnitude, I don't think that's happened yet. And I don't think it's happened because, of course, we're still in the situation that we are currently in. So that one I did not get correct, unfortunately. So last but not least was the further incorporation of consumer-based health applications. And in particular, I actually thought we would start to see more incorporation of sleep data and fitness tracking data. With the sheer sort of volume of activity and the pressure that we faced in the healthcare industry over the course of 2021, there wasn't a lot of time left for health IT teams to focus on new and innovative things. There were certainly pockets of things that happened, but it just wasn't something that we had the ability to sort of divert time to. So I think that this happened, but on a very small scale, I don't think it uh, met up to the prediction that I had. I thought we would spend a lot more time on it. I do still think it's coming and you'll see in next week's video that I actually have it as another prediction for 2022, but I really don't think that enough attention was focused here because it was diverted elsewhere. So what we did see in this area, which I do think is super exciting, is outside of the healthcare industry, the actual general technology industry did focus a lot of attention on these wearables and they did introduce a lot of new features and functionality and a lot more reporting and analytics capability for the consumer. So you can now track your sleep more accurately with some of the more general health tracking apps. So Apple Watches, Fitbits, Garments, and things like that started incorporating more data. They started tracking more things and they started talking a lot more about it the general media and the general environment was actually a lot more focused on things like sleep and fitness as well. And I think the technology industry as a whole reacted to that and they introduced a lot more detailed, a lot more granular tracking for the day-to-day -day lives of their consumers. So it's a good position for us to start as a baseline in because as we shift over and start trying to incorporate that data, we now have uh, more data that we can look at and we have the conversation already started with consumers or with our patient populations. So that's also a good thing. So while I didn't get that prediction right either, it isn't an entirely total washout because there was some movement in that area that will of course benefit us going forward. So that is the quick recap of my 2021 predictions. I hope that I do better in hitting the mark on the 2022s. However, as with everything, I can't predict what's going to happen in the world. And I just find this a fun little exercise for me to put forward what I think we'll talk about. And then I actually really like revisiting to see if I got it right or not. So I hope you have some time during this holiday period to spend with family and friends and that everyone stays safe. I will see you next week for my 2022 predictions.